Hey people, I'm back. Um, this time I'm discussing uh, shoulders. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a quick video on the shoulder joint. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I do have a Bachelor of Science degree in exercise and sports science, and um, my concentration was strength and conditioning. And so I like to say this because um, I've, you know, been working in the fitness industry for 15 years, and I also teach pole dance, and so I've gotten many certifications, you know, over the years as a dancer and a fitness person, and I have, um, I, oops, sorry, I am a teacher and a student, right, and I never want to think I knew everything, but I do know what I know, and I know that sports scientists, in the realm of exercise and fitness, sports scientists are on top, sports scientists and the strength and conditioning specialist. The people who teach group fitness, um, aerobics, personal trainers, they're on the lower end, meaning in terms of knowledge. So the people who really know what's up are the sports scientists, the kinesiologists, the strength and conditioning specialist. I am a strength and conditioning specialist. And so I have done other certifications where I've heard people who are leading the certifications give incorrect information about joints and muscles and anatomy. And because at that moment I am the student trying to pass the certification, I never want to embarrass a teacher or so I usually don't say anything. I remember when I got certified for um, one of my post certifications, uh, I have Elevated Education and Expert um, uh, by Expo. When I was doing that certification, there was someone, the, the woman who was leading it said three things that was totally incorrect about anatomy and kinesiology. Instead of me saying something to her, I just wrote the company after I passed to make sure I get that certification to let them know. Um, but last month, I was, well, in July, I was at um, something in Chicago for um, Dunham Technique. If you don't know who Catherine Dunham is, I, you should know. If you're black, you should know. But if you are a dancer, you should know. And if you're a human, you should know. Catherine Dunham is an amazing anthropologist and dancer who created a modern dance technique based off of dances of the African diaspora very amazing, very particular technique. But in this week-long training, somebody gave us an anatomy and kinesiology um, conversation. And I was like, okay, I love anatomy and kinesiology. I can always learn more. Um, and so, but I'm thinking that they were gonna teach us something that we didn't know, because everybody there was a dance teacher or something. So everybody had some basic level, hold on. Sorry, everybody had some basic level of you know, basic anatomy. So I'm thinking that they're going to tell us something different, especially because Catherine Dunham technique is so particular. You know, the technique is so particular, and they, they put something and they're going to give us more, but they didn't. But one thing, you know, she was, uh, the woman who led it was talking about the joints, and so when she was talking about the hip and the shoulder. And one thing I remember learning in my college kinesiology class is that the hip is a true ball and socket joint, so it's more stable, and the shoulder is not. The shoulder is the most unstable joint in our body, the most unstable joint. And so what a ball and socket joint is, is you have the socket and you have the ball and it's in here. And so for our hip, that's what it is. So for our hips, you have, you know, the, the ball and socket joint, the, hum the humerus goes in, I mean the femur goes in right like that, right? And so we have a lot of flexibility at your hip, you can take it all different directions, right? So the hips have a lot of flexibility. The shoulders are even more flexible. The shoulders can do everything the hips can do and more. But the shoulder joint is not a true ball and socket joint. It's more like you have the scapula right here and then here comes um, the humerus, right? It's kind of like this. So instead of the hip where it's really in there, the shoulder is more like this. And so you have all these muscles and tendons and ligaments that's holding our shoulders stable. The more, it, the more flexibility you have at a joint, the, the less stability you have. So the more things you can do at a joint, the less stable it is. A shoulder is the most flexible joint in the body and the least stable. So this is why, and I remember when I, when I mentioned that, <laughs> the reason why I brought up that, that lecture was because I mentioned that to the woman who was giving the lecture and she just brushed me off like, no, no, no. Um, that's not true. The shoulder joint is a ball socket joint. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe my teachers taught me wrong. Maybe I remember incorrectly, but I definitely remember learning that. And so 
Last night, as I prepared for this discussion, I just went into my little strength and conditioning Bible, which is the Bible on strength and conditioning, Essentials of Strength and Conditioning, okay, by the NSCA, which I got certified as a strength and conditioning coach back in like 2004, so been in the game for a minute. But the first thing it says, right, I'm going to read, when it talks about shoulders, shoulders, the first sentence the shoulder joint is particularly prone to injury during resistance training due to both its structure and the forces to which it is subjected during a training session. Like the hip, the shoulder is capable of rotating in any direction. The hip is a stable ball and socket joint, but the glenoid cavity of the shoulder, which holds the head of the humerus, is not a true socket and is significantly less stable. So I'm like, okay, First few sentences that said that. That's what I told her. She told me she just brushed me off. And I've had that experience when I was getting certifications in like dance related or other fitness related things where the people who were teaching the certifications did not know as much as they should. If you're going to give an anatomy and kinesiology lecture, you need to be an expert on the shit. And I, I constantly see that, but I feel like I have to dumb myself down so I don't offend anybody, but I know they're wrong. So I just go look it up again just to just for me to fact check, right? Okay, so the shoulder is not um, a true ball and socket joint. It's not very stable. So this is why you have to be very careful with it. And this is why, like, if you, if you follow my videos on Instagram and you see me post videos of people lifting incorrectly, I even see a lot of, like, star trainers on Instagram who have, like, a million people following them and their lifting technique is awful and nobody recognizes it. Everybody's cheering them on. No. You never want to cheer on bad lifting technique because that is how you get permanent injuries. Once you injure your shoulder, it will be a nagging injury for the rest of your life, okay? Same thing with your spine, same thing with your knees, you know, you don't, you need to protect your knees, you need to protect your spine, you need to protect your shoulders. And so, resistance training is not a contact sport. So you should not injure yourself lifting weights. If you injure yourself lifting weights, you are doing it incorrectly, period. If you injure your shoulder playing basketball or something, then that's different. That's contact, right? Um, and so in the gym, for sure, you have to be conscious of protecting your shoulders. And so I'm not in a gym right now, so it, I can be limited in how I um, demonstrate. But if you're doing a shoulder exercise, like, oh, let's say I'm doing a back exercise for my back, right? And I'm at the rowing machine. And I'm sitting at this rowing machine. I always want to make sure that my shoulders are actively engaged. And it happens from me squeezing here, like I'm squeezing a pencil in between my shoulder blades, right? And my shoulders are rotated back. So this is my starting position. And let's say I'm holding on to, I'm kind of close. Let's say I'm holding on to a cable, right? So I'm holding on to a cable and I'm sitting here. You see how my back is straight? You see how my shoulders are engaged? They're not like this. I'm not sitting here like this. I'm here, my abs are engaged. Shoulders rotated back. Now as I pull towards me, notice how my shoulders stay stabilized. Now my arms come forward. My shoulders are stabilized. I pull back and I squeeze. And I go forward. I pull back, squeeze. You see how my shoulder stays in place. What my shoulder is not doing, which I see people do all the time, is they're pulling this thing. <clears throat> No, shoulder should not be doing that. It's locked into place. Arm moves, my shoulder is stable, you see? Same thing on this pole back here. Um, one good thing about pole dance instructors, they are better than the average um, fitness in instructor because they really understand about the importance of engaging the shoulders. So I'm losing my light. It's all dark in this video now. But on the pole even, and I don't know if you can hear me, we also have a lot of shoulder engaging. So when I'm here, let me move my chair out of the way. And my hands are a little oily right now. But shoulders, I'm engaging. As opposed to hanging, I'm engaging, right? So you're always pulling your shoulders, your shoulder blades back. Um, you really, don't want to like I can't I can't talk and demonstrate in the poll because you won't hear me, but um, 
If somebody knows what kind of microphone I could get for that, that would be great. But there's a lot of pole moves where you're like hanging. And even though you might be hanging from the pole, you still have to engage your shoulder. You're not, you're not, your arm is not just hanging loose. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Hold up. Um, let's see if I can do a quick little demo of what I mean. So you always want to keep your shoulders pulled back. This is why I need a cameraman, so somebody could walk with me, right? So, mm. okay. So just, I don't know if you can, how well you'd be able to see me, but my shoulders, you don't want, I don't want them, I'm, I'm, even though I'm hanging from the pole, I'm engaging my shoulders, meaning I'm still pulling them back as opposed to hanging like this, right? So I don't want to do this, right? But I'm like, this hanging. Instead, what I do want to do is I'm pulling down on the pole, engaging my shoulders. Not sure if you can see the difference. It also requires some ab activation. But you don't want to put unnecessary stress on your shoulders. You have to keep them engaged and pulled back when you're doing stuff. I see people doing things in the gym, uh, the lat pull down, especially men putting it behind their head. Doing that can cause you to pinch nerves in your shoulders. Um, you see people swinging weights, especially men, in the gym. <sighs> doing that no when you're doing frontal and lateral raises you want control first of all I'm sitting here abs engage always engage your core always right chest out shoulders rotated back whether I'm sitting or standing I have my dumbbells in my hand I'm going to raise but control just to shoulder level not above it just to shoulder level and then come down with control I lift up with control hold it for a second down with control. I should not be engaging my neck or uh, I shouldn't have any momentum. There should be no swinging. I'm not engaging my head. People will be doing the most. No, your body is completely stable and you do it with control. Lifting slowly, exhale, inhale. Hold your breath and lift up. Exhale and come down. You see how I have control? There's no momentum. I'm not throwing my arm, letting it fall down. That's how you end up with a shoulder injury, okay? Um, and I see people doing the most. And so if you follow my Instagram page, you will see me post people, because there's always 100 different examples in every gym of people lifting wrong. You'll see the examples. You need to train your eyes to recognize it and train your body to feel it so you don't injure your shoulders. Because a lot of people are just walking a very fine line. If they have not injured the shoulders, they're about to, okay? And so, we have shoulder dislocations and shoulder subluxation. So, shoulder subluxation, blah, 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 blah. Shoulder subluxations happen, it's like when the shoulder does not completely dislocate, okay? Um, it might have shifted in the socket, and that can be fixed with physical therapy, exercises, stuff like that. Dislocation, um, when you have a dislocation, you usually need a doctor or someone to pop it back into place. And a dislocation happens usually from, um, well, you have anterior and posterior dislocations. So, um, no, my light, it's so dark in here all of a sudden. So an anterior uh, dislocation is what happens 95% of the time. So 95% of shoulder dislocations are anterior ones. And what that means is, an anterior dislocation means it usually happens when the arm is abducted, which means it's away from the body and extended, right? So my arm's extended away from my body and externally rotated. So externally rotated, right? Externally rotated. So I'm in this position. That's usually when this dislocation happens, which can happen in sports. So you get hit, some, some, something pulls your arm back. Now your arm goes forward and your shoulder dislocates. So imagine if my arm went that way. That's an anterior dislocation. That happens in 95% of the cases and um, it, if you can't touch your other shoulder, 
then that's one way that they will diagnose an anterior dislocation. Um, and posterior dislocation happens about 5% of the time and is missed a lot, but that happens from a stroke or being electrocuted. Weird, right? Um, those are posterior dislocations. Um, and then you just have like rotator cuff injuries, which a lot of people have. And the rotator cuffs are a set of muscles that help to any external, out, um, external internal rotation, lifting up. So if you have problems doing this or that, or you can't lift that high, you probably have a rotator cuff problem. And you would need to get that diagnosed. That sometimes can be fixed through physical therapy and strengthening exercises. And sometimes somebody might need surgery. Like it just depends on what your particular situation is and what you're willing to do. But you definitely wanna make sure to protect your shoulders. You wanna protect your spine, your shoulders, and your knees. I'll do videos about the spine and knees another day. Today was about shoulders, but um, be careful. Have good lifting technique. Um, definitely follow my videos to learn more about that. And um, I hope you learned something. And if you did, please follow me on YouTube, The Body Scientist 81, and share my video, and have a great day. Bye.